I've done 380 Uber rides in my Tesla Model 3, which is about 500 passengers. And I'll be honest, they've, uh, they've done some damage to it. I'd say it looks right from the outside, but once you get a bit closer as we are about to, you will see that the damage has in fact added up quite a bit. Following the 20 foot rule, it looks great, but let's get up close and personal with it. So the very first question people have is of course, how are the white seats holding up? Even before I started Uber, people were like, you are gonna regret these white seats because they're gonna be so hard to keep clean. But I'm happy to say the car is four and a half years old. I bought it brand new in 2019 and have put 102,000 miles on it. And I would say the seats look pretty dang good. Now that's not to say they don't take a lot of effort. I gave the car a deep clean about a week ago and I've done about 30 rides since, including people in the front seat. And you can see, I mean, maybe you can't even see. I mean, it's pretty clean. You've got some crumbs here, but they are completely stainless right now. Now this is where most people get into the car. And of course, everyone has trouble doing this. It takes quite a while for them to open the door. Once they do have the door open, they sit right here. And so this would theoretically be the filthiest seat of the car. It looks pretty much brand new. I mean, if you look close, you can see some black smudges there. But wait, Alex, this is the passengers have destroyed my car. All right, let's get to some, some damage, I guess. Starting with the door handle itself. Some people are familiar with Teslas, but they think it's the Model S or the Model X where the door either opens for them or the door pops out. And so what people do is they come up to the car and they just start clawing at this. <laughs> this car has black paint and uh, chrome trim, but on top is a 3M 1080 Glacial Frost satin uh, color flip wrap. And then on all of the trim is satin black wrap as well. So all this was chrome, I wrapped this all in black but unfortunately even if you change like let's say this gets really scratched up and you change the whole piece of door vinyl it's not going to match the rest of the car because over time the car changes color as the sunlight hits it and i'm kind of having trouble actually showing these scratches trust me it's very scratched well, you can't really see it though i guess that's a good thing but okay there we go you can see some scratches here the only way to fix this would be to rewrap the entire car which is <laughs> three to five thousand dollars now if you do it yourself like i did it's more like a thousand so if you're speaking technically from okay i want to make the car look as good as it did before i started uber i would have to rewrap the whole car you can also see this little bit is actually peeling up now it's not peeling on any of the other doors yeah this one's fine this is the passenger and then this is i think a good example is this is the driver's door the one that i open all day do you like how there's no scratches on it <laughs> so the majority of the scratches actually come from people's rings and so as they grab and do this it rips but also again a lot of this damage is just from them clawing trying to open the door like this and then they try to like literally rip it open <laughs> like like look you can see it's the vinyl is peeling there because people try to like dig their fingers in and pull and so at this point i actually do just open the door for most people i just lean back from the passenger seat and then push the interior button and so you can see i have put a second piece of vinyl over this door i cut out a, a rounded square and put another piece of vinyl on top of the door because it was, I was immediately realized it was getting scratched. And uh, so unfortunately I'll just have to rewrap all of this eventually. Luckily this car is garage kept, but if it were out in the sun all day like this, there's a chance that it would, you peel this off and there's just like a big shadow. But I think I'd rather have a shadow than a ton of scratches because some of these scratches are so deep. So I think it's just gonna be completely ripped soon. And then we don't even get into the car yet. We get our second piece of damage. Oh yeah, somebody accidentally keyed the car. Um, <laughs> so you can see the vinyl's peeling here. This is, it was my first time wrapping a car and so this is technically my fault, so ignore that. Um, but you can see I cut the vinyl down and it kind of goes uh, along the body line there. And I was like, all right, cool. This will protect most of the car at least, like the paint's protected, but nope. Someone managed to scratch all the way from here to here along with a very big scuff right here. Uh, this is mostly from people carrying backpacks or having luggage or suitcases or even uh, baby chairs, whatever they're called, and they just kind of throw them in the car. So unfortunately, not just the vinyl is damaged, but the paint itself. This actually will buff out, I'm pretty sure. So it, it could be worse. Now, the other big thing is uh, the small opening to the actual car itself. This opening is fine for me. Like, I mean, I can get in no problem, but I am not very large. Uh, a lot of people, mostly heavier people, have a lot of trouble physically getting into the car. Heavier people and also people with disabilities. So if they use a walker or a cane, they have a lot of trouble getting into the sedan. Now I am an Uber Comfort driver, which is quote, bigger 
than Uber X's, which is technically true. This is bigger than like a Ford Focus or something. But a lot of these people honestly should be ordering Uber XL's because of their mobility, but it's not up to me. And so this has resulted in people's feet dragging, number one. Uh, so I cleaned this pretty often. I cleaned it a week ago, and this is just from a couple days of people's foot grime. Their back foot drags like this, and then as they get out, their front of their right, uh, left foot drags here, and they just like yoink. Personally, my shoes have never touched that. That's the first time my shoes have touched my car, aside from the floor mats. So it, people just have trouble getting in and out of the car. <laughs> now I used to keep this rear seat pushed up all the way uh, so that there was more leg room here. The problem is there's so many passengers that come with four uh, people that we didn't, they can't figure out how to move the seat for some reason. So I just leave it here at this point. And you know, they've, uh, <laughs> they've done a, a number to it. This seat is pretty scratched, pretty scuffed. Not many deep grooves, but you know, it doesn't quite look brand new back here. Uh, this one's actually even worse for some reason. I don't, how is this one so much worse? So I do clean it, but ultimately this is, it's not a very premium plastic, it, it scratches. So yeah, the poor seats have been absolutely molested. <laughs> Luckily, I don't really see that as the driver, so I don't have to worry about it. Uh, and people do the same thing to the glove compartment, like the glove box up there. It's so scratched. Now as a comparison, here's the driver's seat where I am all day. Look at how it's perfectly clean. Look at this. No damage, no scratches. And the, uh, even though I'm the one that's driven this 102,000 miles, how is there no scratches there? But then you go over here, whoops, look at that. And then I back here, whoops, look at that. <laughs> at the end of the day, these seats are never looking like they used to. The center console's all right. Here's my snack, snack thing. It's actually almost completely empty. I bought $80 in snacks. I guess people don't like fruit snacks that much. There's a lot left. Um, all the gummy bears are gone, all the Oreos are gone, all the Chex Mix is gone. Oh, we got one more Chex Mix. The Cheez-Its are the best seller for some reason, which I think there are some Cheez-It crumbs back here. I do let people eat in the car, I let people drink in the car. I even let people have open canisters of alcohol in the car, because, you know, they tip better if you let them bring their alcohol in. No, no spills, luckily. Uh, people are very good about drinks. And again, I, I want to mention, people are very respectful of the vehicle. And you're probably thinking, like, why don't you put seat covers and why don't you put like I've gotten in Ubers as a passenger where there's literally towels everywhere like heavy duty towels that looks like they're just anticipating that I'm gonna vomit at any second and personally I kind of take offense to it as a passenger because I feel like it's a sign of respect to show that you trust people with the car this is a lot less damage than I expected for hundreds of people to be getting out in and out of this car and you gotta give them some credit these people are drunk it's usually pitch black they don't know how the car works. Oftentimes we're in a rush because we're like on a main road and I just stop on the side of the road. I think they do a pretty good job at taking care of my car. So especially when I do clean this up before my week of Uber and I wash the floor mats and everything, most people say, oh wow, so like you just got this car? Like they, they think it just came off the factory floor like last week, which I will be honest, I appreciate. It kind of flatters me when people think that it's a brand new car. Uh, here's the driver's seat, which I mean, I've, I've been in every mile of the drive and it's the cleanest seat of course and also you should think about what these people are coming from not all, like yes i focus on college students a lot but oftentimes i do people that are working construction for example and you can see back here actually you can't you can kind of see it uh there's like this white stain that i can't get rid of i think it's cement because uh, a guy got off a construction site and he threw his metal tools and helmet back here and so it, yeah i should probably get something to protect the back back here I've also got some of my emergency cleaning supplies. Lots of people from the airport throw their luggage in the back and uh, sometimes they miss. We do have a scratch here. What sucks is the rear bumper was insanely difficult to wrap. This was the hardest piece of the entire car. It took me three, I think it took me four tries and then the bumper got damaged and I had to replace the bumper and wrap it again. And even then you can still see my mistakes vinyl wrapping the bumper. Um, it's like not even complete over here. <laughs> Uh, but you know, it's all right. But anyway, yes, it has been scratched by people. This is a 2019 model, which means that the rear does not close itself. So what you have to do, ideally, is you put your hand in this and then you pull down and you don't touch, you don't touch the vinyl at all. But people have never done that. They close it in two ways. One is they grab here and pull downwards, which leaves fingerprints all over this. And two is they grab onto my aftermarket spoiler, which is not ideal. The spoiler is just, hanging on for dear life at this point, because so many people have slammed the car shut <laughs> using the spoiler itself. So if this flies off on the highway someday, we'll know why. Uh, this spoiler 
is a fake carbon fiber spoiler. The official Tesla carbon fiber is like 400, so I got an $80 one from eBay. So at least it's not too expensive to replace. Next up, we can check out one of my greatest fears, which is when people sit in the front. Not too many people do. It's the rarest seat for people to sit in. Some individual passengers like to be up here while there's also just groups. Uh, I do let them control the screen. They can screw around with it, with it if they want. They also get control of Spotify. They can play whatever they want. So I have some kind of weird random uh, suggestions in here, although pink season is me, unfortunately. However, the front seats are different from the rear in that when you get in the back, people close the door, no problem. But once this door is closed, they are trapped. They can't figure out how to get out. They reach kind of, they usually go, uh, 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 excuse me, how do I open the door? So now I say there's two buttons. Look for the button with the white line on it, hold it and press it. So what they do is they go, and that just rolls the window down. And then they go, oh, sorry, I rolled your window down. They roll it back up. And then they press the other one, which also rolls the window down. And they're like, oh, sorry, I rolled your window down again. And then this starts to happen, this little dance with it, because they can't get the window back up. And I'm like, nope, that's right. Hold this button and push the door. And then they figure it out. Uh, there's no physical latch. There's no emergency latch. So if the electronics die in the car and you get stuck in the car, you have to go through the front and use the emergency latch. Some people dislike that there's only an emergency latch in the front. Personally, I wish the only emergency latch was on the driver's door because <laughs> uh, this is kind of just on Tesla, I guess, for designing it this way. This is the emergency latch here. You pull it upwards and it opens the door. But then you get this pop-up here that says, Manual door release used may cause damage to window. But when the window's rolled up and you use the emergency latch, you risk breaking the window. So anytime someone sits in the front, I now have to basically, from the driver's side, roll the passenger window down really fast before they have a chance to grab this emergency latch and break my window. It's just the doors are kind of annoying when it comes to Ubering. Just because the car's been on the road so much, other damage happens. However, I can't blame this on the road. This is when I... <laughs> I was trying to squeeze past a car and I hit a mailbox and um, yeah, the mailbox took a chunk out of my <laughs> mirror, so whoops, that's on me. Also, the car has been curved, however, this actually wasn't me, this is when my ex was driving that she hit a really bad pothole and took a chunk out of my rim, but whatever, we're not, we're not going to talk about that. Because I did also curb, if you look at a Model 3 or Model Y, just go look at the rims and look at how much rash has been put on the rims. What I was told is the way the Tesla is designed makes it feel like you have four more inches of clearance than you do because the seats are in a slightly different position from a traditional car. So basically when you think you have a little bit more clearance in a regular car, you actually don't in the Tesla and you end up curbing the wheels, so cool. This is actually the worst curb. <laughs> It, it just, for the record, my other car isn't curbed at all, so I don't know. Like, okay, look, I had never curbed any vehicle until this one. It's it's on. It's partly on me. It's partly on the design. I'm just gonna keep blaming Tesla because that's what everyone does anyway. Everything's Tesla's fault, apparently. The other issue, which you cannot see, is the wear and tear of the vehicle. So I go through tires very quickly, partially because I am very, a very lead-footed driver. That's that's rubber on the back of the car there. Uh, the rubber has actually stained the vinyl. Again, this isn't Uber's fault. Interestingly, it's not on this side, but the car is pretty heavy and uh, I do drive it a lot. So I go through tires fast, whatever. That doesn't really matter too much. However, in a couple days, it's going back into Tesla because the front suspension is getting repaired again. I mentioned this in a recent video. It's the fourth suspension repair, which isn't completely Tesla's fault. And I would say isn't completely my fault either. Uh, the suspension on the older Model 3s is not amazing, which you know, four years isn't that old, but they have improved it supposedly on the new Model 3 coming out. <laughs> but either way, uh, I've done some silly stuff. I, uh, I have jumped train tracks, which probably added to why it wore down so qu quickly the first time. It was a bad habit when I was 19. I see train tracks, I just go zoop, and then I go in the air. You know, that's not going to be great on the car. Also, I do tow with this car. Uh, it's not supposed to tow, but there is a hitch that fits. So I have a full two inch hitch in the back and I love it. This actually has saved me from having to buy another vehicle because I just have an eight foot trailer and it tows everything I need. I moved houses and I didn't need a U-Haul. I just used my own trailer in my car. I also carry my bike with it. I've transported and bought my lawnmower with it. You've seen it in a lot of videos. So that probably has added to the suspension wear. And okay, in the past year, I've done nothing nothing too crazy in the car i've just driven it pretty normally aside from accelerating hard you know if someone wants to like stop that race or whatever however 
the front lateral link, I don't know what it's called, part of the suspension died again after just 20,000 miles in the past 12 months, which doesn't, I don't know. It lasted 80,000 the first time, and then the second time it breaks, it only lasts 20,000. It do be like that sometimes. And aside from that, it's just the car gets kind of filthy. So uh, dirt will build up here from people grabbing this and rubbing their hand on it. There's a little bit here. Actually, there's a scratch here, but that might be from before Uber. And so let's take my hourly Uber. Let's say I make 25 an hour doing Uber before expenses. Well, that technically doesn't account for the time that's spent cleaning it and everything. But I mean, I like the car anyway. I want to clean, clean it. I want to keep it clean. So yes, I have to clean it maybe three times as often as I would if I did not drive Uber. But to me, the pros definitely outweigh the cons. And people really appreciate getting into a nice clean car. I've gotten into some filthy Ubers. Come on, you gotta respect your car more, especially if you're going to be carrying clients in it. Like that's literally your job is to just drive your car. You could at least clean it up a little bit. And you can see my car is far from perfect. There's a truck coming. Hopefully I'm not gonna be in the way. I might have to move my car. Nope, we're good. Oh, yeah, but even, I don't know, stuff like the snacks. The snacks really increase my tips. I keep waters and I keep Gatorades. Uh, normally they're refrigerated and everything. So I'd say I'm a pretty dang good Uber driver, ultimately. Uh, 380 rides, I've never gotten a four star. I've only received five star ratings. And uh, people often request me again. People have just taken my number and then just called me to be like, hey, can you come pick me up? So I'm uh, happy to say that it looks like people like me as a driver and they adore the car. They love the color, they love the ride, they love the acceleration, they love the full self-driving features. I kind of show them everything. They get a full, t I need to be getting paid by Tesla basically. I've sold so many Teslas. I don't like using my referral link, like giving it to people because that's just cringe and uh, I just personally hate people that have Tesla referral links. <laughs> You're so annoying. Shut up. I don't want your stupid referral link. Uh, so I'm not putting my referral link. Go find a different one if you want to buy a Tesla. I don't care. I'm making bank from Uber. <laughs> oh, and I'm sure some people are curious. Uh, Uber's not my full-time job. So as people ask that are riding, I bought the Uber. I mean, I bought the Tesla with uh, YouTube money. And now I've just also Uber. So can you Uber and afford a Tesla? Maybe. I think you could actually get a used Model 3 like this. I think up front I paid 42000 for the car, and then I paid 6000 for full self-driving, so about 48000 and then 1000 to get it delivered. Uh, so about 50000 for the car total. You can get this car with fewer miles now for like 30000 And so I actually do think that if you are an Uber driver, a Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus used is surely gonna be profitable uh, because I do save a ridiculous amount on gas. There's superchargers everywhere and people just adore the car. It's a great Uber car. Aside from having trouble getting in and stuff, pretty much every passenger is obsessed with it. Even Tesla, I've had Tesla haters get in it uh, who are like, God, I hate Elon, I hate electric cars. <laughs> They're just like, they get in so hateful. But by the end of the drive, whether they're faking it or not, they claim that they actually have fallen in love with the car, so. And it's not a super premium car. Like this isn't a Rolls Royce or a Bentley. So if someday I do have to replace a whole seat, it won't be the worst thing ever. But no vomit so far, no urine, no blood, no spilled drinks. Basically no liquids have touched the car by passengers. Uh, just crumbs, dirt, some grime. All in all, if I wanted to restore the car to look like it did right before I started Ubering, yeah, it would cost, I mean, I don't know, $5,000 maybe for a new, brand new wrap and fixing the, some, the scratched bits on the seats and everything. But it's the kind of thing, like it's not a brand new car anyway. I like using my cars and as much as I love to try and keep them as perfect as possible, I don't mind if they do show some wear from just regular use and stuff. Because A, I want to enjoy the car and B, why not pay for the car with the car by using the car? I get to get paid to drive, it's, it's pretty cool. So all in all, everyone's been respectful. Ultimately, the majority of the damage is from disabled people, <laughs> which I just feel kind of bad, like trashing on disabled people. <laughs> and some people might say this is bad, but my new rule is to not take Uber rides under half a mile because most people are just gonna walk half a mile and not order an Uber. Those that do order an Uber for under half a mile are disabled and they physically can't get around. I know that's maybe that's bad of me, but ultimately it actually has increased the longevity of the car by not taking rides under a half mile because I don't get as many disabled people in the car. I'm sorry. But look, someone else will pick you up. There's plenty of Ubers in the area. And also, if you can afford it, I would recommend that you order an XL, not a Comfort, because Comforts aren't very large. Uh, like even a Camry, I think, can be a Comfort. So if you can afford it, maybe try an XL. But that's it. If you want to see some more videos of me actually Ubering and doing DoorDash, Instacart, Amazon, Flex, all sorts of stuff, mostly in this car, but also in the Subaru BRZ, 
Uh, I'll link that playlist in the description. And if you want to see more from me, more personally about me, I have a series called Getting a Life that I'm working on. It's kind of like a vlog series, but I think it's a lot better than a vlog series, so maybe you'll like it. And definitely don't hesitate to let me know if you want more car-related videos, because I love to show it off. So overall, I'm quite happy with Uber. Shout out to everyone that's ridden who have subscribed to the channel, because I do talk about YouTube when I'm Ubering. And that'll be it. I'm Alex, and thanks for watching.